in addition to this, um, you may have like per environment variables. So a good example of that is uh, like Amazon S3, for example. You may have a bucket per environment that you use. That bucket to, to, to whatever we need it to be. Um, there's alternate ways of doing that. In settings.php, for example, you can you can hard code in there certain variable settings. Um, we tend to use like multiple settings.php, like so one per environment. Um, I'll be interested to hear how other people approach that. Base foundation so that you can actually um, build in those testing procedures later on. Um, obviously, this you know it's not it's not necessarily ideal the way that uh, features and strong arm and the module support that exists for them at the moment. It's not necessarily ideal. There is obviously little gaps. Um, and I'm sure if you've all used features at some point, you will have hit these particular issues where you've got things that just don't enable things that just doesn't matter how you deploy it. Nothing. Uh, a good example of that. I can never get a panel to enable whenever I deploy the panel's <coughs> configuration. Uh, so what you have to do in those cases is obviously write your kind of update hooks in your custom modules, or maybe even in that master dependency module that, 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 that I was discussing earlier. In your hook enable, you could have something which you know you're going to always have to do on every deployment. Um, so you've got those update hooks which you can use in addition, or those enable hooks that you can use in addition also. Um, again, yes, the environment, the environment <coughs> specific variables. Um, also, and, and this is going to happen more and more, soft configuration. And what I mean by soft configuration is clients who know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, That's sorry. That's all of them, isn't it? Essentially, yes. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, so you basically have to always accept the fact that Drupal is kind of out there. There's lots of tutorials, and basically, from a UI perspective, everyone knows how to use it. So it's not necessarily a big leap to expect your clients to actually kind of manage their panels configurations or manage their views. So at that point, <coughs> you have maybe stuff which you've deployed, but actually is going to change after that point. And if you were to deploy it again, you would overwrite their changes. So there's kind of a certain degree of client communication there. And the way that we've kind of addressed it in the past is to have a good tracking system where we're all kind of talking and to kind of, before you do a deployment, go on, check the uh, status of all the features, if we have to rebuild the features and roll them into our kind of code base. Um, sometimes it's just a specific panel configuration for say the home page. they're gonna change it all the time. Um, actually, it just shouldn't be in features. So maybe it's there for your initial deploy, but then after that point, just take it out of the code. At the same time, actually just taking it out of the code in itself can sometimes be a little bit of a challenge. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something to kind of handle with kick gloves. Is there an option in features or some other tool to say, uh, take what the customer's done and uh, export it into some um, code form or, or set of v relevant VSets to those changes? Yeah, so, so um, in, in the UI at least, um, and you could probably do this on a live environment, um, uh, you can basically use the UI to just download the feature um, with whatever changes are in it at the time. So that's how at least I would approach it. I know the client's changed a certain view <coughs> on the production site, so I go to the feature where they've changed it, I can see the uh, in individual elements that they've changed and then download that feature and then just take that kind of code and drop <coughs> it back into my development environment, commit it and then push it back up. Um, from a debugging perspective, um, there's a couple of modules which, which we use, uh, features overrides, um, and essentially that, that will clearly give you um, an example in the UI of what specific things have been changed. Um, one thing that sometimes happens, and I'm sure you've all seen this, features say that they're overridden, but actually you know, they're, they're not overridden. Ones are stored as like true, and it seems to flip between the two. So it's worth kind of having a module like features override to be able to go in and inspect that and see actually is this overridden, is this worth like, kind of uh, worrying about. <coughs> and then in other situations 
you may have to just literally get into that feature, start chopping out chunks of it. Um, so it's worth kind of becoming uh, familiar with, with how the kind of C tools expor exportables work and kind of how uh, a views array is kind of put together, for, for example. Okay, so um, Drupal 8 obviously brings uh, configuration management. So that's going to be in core. And that kind of changes a lot of what I'm kind of talking about here in terms of kind of using features in Strum. I'm told you can use the two alongside each other. Um, not that I've successfully got that to work yet. And uh, the backported version of configuration, I'm not <coughs> sure, has, has anyone else used the backported version of configuration yet? No. Okay, so um, I've, I've tried it out myself and was hoping to kind of build the next project kind of using configuration, but from, from what I can tell so far, it's still kind of early days. Um, obviously, um, definitely worth watching, uh, but basically storing all that configuration in versionable files in a similar format. Um, there's also an option to kind of actually decide whereabouts that configuration can be stored. I think the, uh, the default is to store it in default files, which obviously you would typically set in your git ignore file. So pretty much the first thing that you'll do as soon as you enable that module is to move that somewhere else. Um, there's actually a session tomorrow morning on configuration and the configuration API, um, which is definitely worth uh, going to. Um, and I, I believe they're going through a tutorial on how to build your modules uh, using the config API. Um, so that's that's probably a good one to watch. So uh, in conclusion, um, yeah, basically, I hope I've kind of covered at least a kind of intermediate, kind of middle ground that doesn't take you through to kind of doing necessarily full drush makes and install profiles and distributions, but isn't kind of right right down there and just FTPing stuff around. So um, this this method has definitely worked for us. Uh, it's just meant that we can kind of deploy our code quickly. And essentially it's meant that we've had happy customers, um, we've been able to version our site configuration, we've been able to have predictable results, uh, we've been able to do those regular site updates as soon as there was a security issue, and yeah, we've had happy clients as a result. So, uh, thank you very much. Um, any questions? Um, I've had things like content types and stuff like that stored in features and then mm -hmm. I'll turn off the feature because I think don't need that anymore, it's up there, it's live, and then I find that I've deleted all my content types. Yeah. Any tips on how to get that kind of stuff out before you then turn off your yeah. Hmm, yes, that's a good question because I've, I've, I've done the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure of the best approach to that. I mean, I think um, at least kind of what's going on behind the scenes is that it's, uh, it's stored in code and you need to get it back into the database. Um, so I think there's actually, with with panels and views, I kind of, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can actually kind of switch it off and, and tell it to not kind of follow the uh, the feature. Um, it's probably worth kind of getting under the bonnet a little bit. Um, sorry, I can't kind of be more specific on that one. It's a challenge that you know I need to face as well. I'm afraid. So, uh, but yeah, if anyone else has any kind of uh, tips on that, no. <laughs> Shame. Okay. Um, any other questions? Right. Thanks very much. Are these slides going to be available? Uh, yes, um, I believe so.